readings YouTube. Years ago, I did a video about a review on a book that dealt with the occult nature of ASMR. It was a bad book. It wasn't very good. Um, but because it dealt with the occult, and the occult is in the title of the video, it does attract a certain degree of attention from those that are coming to the video because of its religious nature, its spiritual nature. And recently, I got someone who came on there and told me that Jesus saves, and there was a little praying symbol. Um, and I'm like, I said, you know, coming to someone's channel and telling them something like this is kind of tasteless. You know, publicizing to someone is kind of tasteless. And they told me that the, 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 the taste of hell would be far worse. They were trying to be clever if they weren't. That, not to mention they had no concept of capitalization, uh, punctuation, and spelling or grammar. Um, so that, that impacts my view of somebody. Now, there are people out there who do lowercase intentionally. E.E. E. Cummings comes to mind. Um, it is very common in, in, in modern parlance to go lowercase because of the text communication and things like that. But you see, I'm old-fashioned. When I send texts, I actually use capitals and lowercase letters. I put punctuation in my emails. I use periods, even though younger folks see that as being a little bit too forward and formal. doesn't matter. It's how I roll. But yeah, I judge people when they do things like that. I also judge people when they start to decide that they're going to be a missionary and they're going to come into my house and start preaching at me. Because that's what my channel is. It's my house. Just like if you're on my porch preaching at me, I'm going to tell you to go away. And if you're in my channel preaching at me, I'm also going to tell you to go away. But I tried to be very pleasant about it. I said it was tasteless. And I said, I said you're on your path. I'm on my path. I said, you worry about your soul. Let me worry about mine. And they wouldn't give it up. And they just, it kept getting worse. They kept spouting more and more socially conservative clap trap at me um and it got just horrible and so uh i decide told finally i just said i'm not going to let you use my channel as your platform for your socially conservative bigotry um uh, and then they and their comments went away um because i do not tolerate that crap i will not brook missionaries on my channel um i'm opposed to the very concept of missionary because it's invariably uh, a mechanism of white supremacy. And it is all about creating the divisions between religious groups. For example, when those Jehovah's Witnesses and such show up at your door, that's not about getting new recruits. I mean, if they get new recruits, cool. You know, that, that, that's just like the bonus of like if you're, if you're paid to clean a bus or planes and you find change awesome it's a bonus but that's not what you're doing it's just a side thing now what they're doing is being shown that the world doesn't want them it is a mechanism for the cult they belong to to reinforce that the world is against them and the only people they can trust are those within the organization itself because a lot of people treat those folks very poorly I myself have treated them poorly in the past, and I feel bad about that. It was shameful that I did it, and I regret having done it. Because when they showed up one day at my door, I opened it, and there were two naked people on my sofa. Which completely and utterly freaked them out, and they left. That was tasteless. It was not good of me to do that. I shouldn't have done it. Um, but nowadays, I just tend to say, I've got a religious religion thanks bye now or you now you walk past a sign that said no soliciting you are aware of that right and sometimes they'll say what am i soliciting i said my time and ultimately my soul so we're good bye and then i walk away and they leave they're not dumb they've, they've got other people to to go harass and other people who may be na nasty to them and again reinforce that they are in a secluded group of of the saved while the rest of the world is doomed. I read a, uh, an autobiography uh, or a memoir. I, I can't remember, remember the difference between the two. 
um, of a woman who had been raised among, among Jehovah's Witnesses. Sorry, I get, I get tired. I get my face issues. I don't know why. Um, and uh, she talks about, you know, the fact that they were raised to believe that they were surrounded by like witches. Literally, that like you can't buy things from thrift shops or yard sales and things like that because they were tainted by witchcraft. That they, they really had this mental framework that there were witches everywhere. I'm telling you, I know witches. They're not that common. And if there were as many witches in the world as the Jehovah's Witnesses think there are, we would be far better off. Because witches, by and large, are a hell of a lot less socially conservative than fundamentalist Christians. Not all of them, because you do have folks out there, say, for example, in the white nationalist community, which also have pagan beliefs. Um, but not all pagans are white nationalists. Not all nationalists are pagans. But there is some overlap there, and it's kind of ugly. Um, so, yeah. I wish there were more witches in short, but there aren't. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't want you coming to my door and trying to save me. I don't want you coming to my channel and trying to save me. Stay away. You aren't welcome here. You're not going to get very far. I have a religious belief. It has one I have been uh, working on and developing since I was 22. At the time of this recording, I am 56. So I have been working on that for, do the math, yeah, 34 years. 34 years. I have been a theist with a pagan worldview for longer than I had been without it. And I started becoming an agnostic around 19, so I had been atheist, and I became an agnostic, and eventually I moved into becoming a, a theist, um, a, a pagan theist, um, when I was about 22. So you're not going to sway me. I'm not saying that I, I, I will not, I'm not, I am immune to the idea that new information can change my worldview, because it does. But you're not going to convince me to become a member of a socially conservative religion. That much I can tell you. Because I consider social conservatism to be a disease. It's a communicable disease that we need to stamp out. I see it as the greatest danger that is in the world for our species. Because it is the heart and the root and the foundation of all the bigotry and the white nationalism and the misogyny and the homophobia and the transphobia and the religious fundamentalism of the world around us. Social conservatism is dangerous. And I don't need socially conservatives. Social conservatives come to my channel and trying to save me. I don't need to be saved. You take care of your soul. I will take care of mine. Okay? We good? I sure hope so, because I really don't want any more social conservatives coming to my channel. Boy, do I not want to. I have a birthday coming up. So give me a present and don't come here. <laughs>